Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Eileen Julian. I teach literature, um, film, post-colonial studies, Francophone studies uh, at Indiana University. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be, this be here this afternoon with Lion Ayodele, and who is from Sierra Leone, who is a photographer. Um, he works in Brooklyn and does art and poetry and writing and performance uh, and film. And sitting next to me is Joseph Guy Ramaka, who was born in Senegal and who is uh, a filmmaker, documentary film, fiction film. Um, Joe did studies in visual anthropology in Paris at the Ecole des de Hautes Etudes. Um, and he's founded a production company and, um, and uh, created a cinema uh, with wonderful sound and so forth in Dakar. Um, and he's written, he's written a lot of scripts, but done some films that are well known and have made um, um, festival circuits in the US and around the world. Um, and so he is, among other films, he's uh, done Carmen Gay, which is probably his best known film. And he's done a number of documentaries, um, including one that is um, highly critical of um, the Senegalese government under, um, under uh, President Wad from some years ago. So both are here. And we are here actually because Mayan Boniti, who um, runs, directs the uh, New York African Film Festival, thought it would be fun, fun and interesting to get um, two filmmakers from different generations and beginning with different genres in, in some sense um, to talk to one another about their work. And so that's why we're here. Um, and Mayan had some interesting comments. Um, she mentioned that um, not only were these two different generations, but that she saw some interesting comparisons between um, the use, the, the, the dialogue, I think, of, of, of the arts in, in your work. Um, she also uh, was taken with the aesthetics of each of these works. And um, she thought that, the, that, that since both of you are commenting on plagues or strife, in difficult times, she thought that it would be interesting to hear what you think the arts might contribute to um, our understanding of these moments that we are living currently. Um, Joe did a film for um, the, this year's edition of the African uh, Film Festival in New York called Mbasmi, The Play. Uh, he did it in Wolof. He's had it, it's, it's been, uh, he'll tell you about it, but basically it's a, it's a film in Wolof with English subtitles and um, Lion has done a film, um, Alexander the Great Cut Off My Nose, um, which uh, is also uh, at one of the films that one can see um, on the website of the African Film Festival. So um, those are the two films that, that I think gave Mayan the, the sense that it, there could be an interesting dynamic and exchange around um, what you all have done in this work. So that's it. I want to just begin, though, by asking perhaps each of you to just say something about how you got to where you are in terms of the work that you're, that you're doing with film. And then perhaps specific, more specifically, what was it that led you to the particular films that you, um, that you submitted uh, to um, the African Film Festival? So those are my opening questions. So. Lion, and, and listen, Joe speaks French, so I'll be translating what he's saying. So okay. Lion, why don't you begin? Oh, okay. So yeah, I began as a photographer. I was a fashion photography assistant um, for many years under various uh, fashion photographers. And um, just to make a long story short, I had a motorcycle accident. Um, years ago and i remember um saying to myself ah, you know okay. during this this collision i can't die like this you know i i can't die knowing that i have this i, I believe a responsibility to share um my knowledge my upbringing my my sort of fundamentals um and uh, and add that to the african lexicon um of of visual storytelling so, and, and I felt like at the time, uh, me being involved in fashion, not to say that fashion is not something that one would respect, but I just felt like 
my contribution wouldn't help society in the way that I would have wanted to, especially if I had died that day. So on this day, while flying through the air, I promised um, God and the universe that I would do something, <laughs> as ridiculous as that may sound, but you know, um, you, time really does slow down and, and stand still. So in that elasticity, I, I like, um, I just said to God, like, if I have another chance, I will dedicate my life and, and energy towards um, enabling a sort of different image. And, you know, especially at that time of fashion, we're seeing there were no black models. There, it was, you know, is it a very sort of European-esque uh, beauty that we're celebrating. So to spend your whole days indulging in... When was exactly, that? When was that? I would say this is around 2000 and maybe four, 2005. Okay. So, um, so, and, okay. and I have to add that um, I'm Sierra Leonean and we have, we have a very rich history, but for whatever reason in the last maybe 40 years, we have very few filmmakers, very few artists, very few creatives who are actually um, working to actually um, project our message. We, have, we, we don't have a lot of visual um, artists. And I felt like if there was one thing that I could do in terms of my contribution okay. to society would be actually um, broadcasting our aesthetic, our culture, but from a very modern, taking that fashion um, knowledge and bring it into a more futuristic Africa. Okay. Ma première expression artistique euh, a démarré par la photographie, mm. euh, la photographie noir et blanc. Et c'est seulement dans un second temps que je suis arrivé au cinéma. So he said that um, he actually began as a photographer in black and white. And, uh, and then he, he moved on to, to, to filmmaking, basically. So he started actually, you started with fashion, but he started also with photography in black and white, and then moved on to making films. Okay. Um, so I guess the, the, the next question would just be, so in fact, you, you, you partly um, explained one of your films that's up on Vimeo, the racing protocol film to a certain extent, I think, and you could comment on that, but this, the particular film, um, Alexander the Great, Cut Off My Nose, um, could you say a little bit about the origins of that? Uh, well, okay. Um, Whatever experiences led you to, to the, that particular um, sort of uh, uh, presentation? Yeah. I had just come back from Egypt and, um, and I observed that for whatever reason, all of these statues seem to have the same thing in common, which was that the nose was missing. And when I inquired further into it, I was told the same thing repeatedly. And I found it very strange that in all of the excavations, they would have this same problem every single time and in the exact same place that the nose would chip off. So I just found that fascinating of like, how you can um, appropriate aspects of history and, and kind of delete them. So later on, I ended up being in Washington, D.C. and taking a drive out to, um, I, I think it's, yes, yeah, the Walter Museum in Baltimore, where I observed another Egyptian statue, this time with the nose missing again. So for whatever reason, I decided to film this statue and I, <laughs> I, I was kind of mocking the idea of it being a commercial break, you know. Um, this aspect of, of monetization of our culture, this aspect of us not being allowed to have um, the representational identity associated with Black culture, but it being able to be appropriated and monetized for others, you know. So it was just a mocking... Um, I wanted to create something that was tongue in cheek, that wasn't so necessarily abrasive, but, um, but could uh, convey several mm -hmm. messages at the same time. Well, and so um, this was outside of Washington DC where you saw this other, this particular statue or there were many? The, well, I saw, I mean, th this is pretty much what you will find of pre-dynastic uh, Egyptian um, artifacts. Uh -huh. 
but this particular one I shot in Baltimore, which I found I, it just being so close to home, <laughs> I, I, you know, and Africa being um, available for me to visit in my local museum in uh, Washington or Baltimore or anywhere in the world is pretty funny. So I, I, I mean, that's why it's called uh, channel surfing. That particular self-critique was associated with the greater body of my work, which extends into visual arts of uh, more of a photography and painting, sculpture. So just the themes that I think that I pick up on um, are a little bit more advanced in terms of our natural conversations that we have about African uh, discourse mm -hmm. or over African discourses. Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna ask Joe now to talk about the particular motivation for this, the film that he's, he submitted to, to my end of the festival. Oui, là, avec le, le COVID, uh, With COVID, j'ai uh, redécouvert uh, Biotex, uh, La Peste, de Albert Camus. With COVID, he, he, he rediscovered an old by Albert Camus on the plague. Et euh, mon impression était que pour l'essentiel, euh, il n'y avait rien de nouveau. And his, his feeling was that, in fact, there was nothing new. Euh, pour l'essentiel. Essentially. Essentially, that things were as they were when Et Camus wrote that. Le désarroi qui euh, envahissait la planète euh, était déjà connu. And that the kind of disarray that the whole planet was going through was was already was already known was already had already been had been present in our lives. Voilà, donc tout est parti de là. Il s'agissait dès lors pour moi de voir avec ce que je savais faire comment euh, rappeler au monde euh, les mots par lesquels on avait. So um, the 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 point is is that. Um, he felt that this, this was an experience that had been there. And how could he do with his particular talents or skills, um, you know, bring that, bring that perspective back, that um, the, this was something that people had known and experienced, and how could he reproduce that uh, in a way that would be meaningful within the current context? Je sentais qu'il fallait le dire dans, devant le dire dans l'urgence, je sentais bien qu'il fallait Uh, le dire avec uh, toutes les économies de mots ou d'expressions possibles. L'économie d'expression possible pour pouvoir dire juste l'essentiel. So in order to say just the essential, the bare bones, he felt that it had to be done with the least amount of, um, I would say, artifice. The, well, of course, that's, always, that's never the truth, but um, the least amount of, of in the simplest, the cleanest, the most economical language, filmic language possible. Et l'économie absolue des couleurs ou l'expression la plus euh, simple et pure des couleurs, c'est le noir et blanc. And so the, the, the least, well, um, the, the simplest, purest use of color was black and white. Et Et c'est pourquoi, par exemple, le film est en noir et blanc. And that's why the film is in black and white. Voilà, juste pour saisir l'essence même de la couleur, l'essence même des choses. So as to, um, to essence of things. Voilà, donc c'est ça qui euh, a donné naissance à ce, à ce film. And, and that's what, what gave rise to this film. Le, le choix de, de la nature mm -hmm. plutôt que des hommes était une manière de repartir au, au temps premier des choses. The, the choice of nature as opposed to people was a way to go back to the, the beginning of things, to the, to the, to the nature of things. Et c'est pourquoi la nature euh, occupe tout l'espace de l'image et que l'homme, dans cet espace occupé par la nature, est un élément infiniment petit. And so that's why, you know, the space is, it, it's... It's the space of nature, and people are an infinitesimal part of, 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 that, of that setting, of, 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 of nature. Et c'est parce qu'on a rompu cet équilibre essentiel entre l'homme 
infiniment petit et la nature infiniment grande que de tels désastres peuvent arriver. And, he, and Joe is saying that because um, we have broken the, um, the link between people and um, nature in, in a certain way, um, that's, that's why this kind of disaster can, can come about. That's, that's explaining his film. So I'm, now what I really would like to do is to allow each of you to, you can ask a question of Joe or say something that you might want to ask him or tell him. And then I would ask him to do the same with you. I, I have lots of notes here that I could bring up, but I think it would be more interesting to give you both free reign to sort of interact without my necessarily producing some sort of format for you. So if, is there anything you'd like to comment on with respect to well, what he said or to, um, to ask about or to perhaps compare to your own work? The, the first thing I would like to say is I thought the, uh, Joe's film was beautiful, beautifully shot the composition, the lighting, the storytelling, I, I enjoyed all of it. Um, and I shared it with many friends. Um, so I, I think the first question I have is, where was it shot? Uh, uh, Gore, Gore Island. For whatever reason, I, I don't know why I thought it was shot in Europe, but that's very interesting. I mean, I saw the cannons there, you but I didn't- You thought it was- I, I thought for whatever reason it was okay. shot in Europe, but I did see the cannons, but I didn't put two and two together. I didn't instantly think Gory Island. So okay. that's really clever. Okay, okay, yeah. Tu as déjà compris. Il oui, pensait que c'était l'Europe ouais. mm -hmm. uh, du Sud. Mm -hmm. Et il a vu les canons et... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So it was shot in Gorey. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, J'ai vu donc, j'ai revu encore aujourd'hui son, son, son film. L'Alexandre Oui. So he's saying that he, he looked again at your film, um, the Alexander, you know, Alexander with the great cut off, cut off my nose. Et quand Maën m'a me l'a envoyé, mm -hmm. euh, j'ai cette urgence dans laquelle moi-même j'ai réalisé euh, Basmi. Euh, j'ai eu le, le sentiment de retrouver là la même urgence de dire. OK. À travers son film. OK, so he's saying that when Maën sent him your film, he... he he felt the same um, urgency in your film as is in his film to tell, to say, to, to relate. Et, et j'ai remarqué aussi euh, le fait qu'il euh, il a utilisé le moins de, juste le minimum de mots possible pour savoir qu'il disait quelque chose. Mm -hmm. And he noticed that you used the minimal amount of words um, to, to, to express what it was you wanted to say. Use the very minimalist, um, you know, ver verbal discourse to, et, to say. Et je me dis que c'est peut-être aujourd'hui qu'on est envahi, submergé par, par l'expression, par l'image, par les sons, par... c'est peut-être aujourd'hui la meilleure façon de se faire entendre, huh. d'en dire le moins. So he says that, um, that maybe today, because we're so... Um, Submer we're so drowning in images and sounds and you know every we're drowning in that maybe the fewer the fewer words the more likely it is to th that that one can really say something même si je me pose encore la question je sais que j'ai vu j'ai entendu quelque chose quelqu'un qui avait à dire quelque chose vite et qui le dit et ce qui me reste dans la tête mais qu'est-ce qu'il voulait me dire qu'est-ce qu'il voulait me dire mais je sais qu'il a dit quelque chose qui lui était essentiel Et il pouvait pas être plus long qu'il a été. Okay, so he he feels that um, he that uh, he felt that 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 the filmmaker, whoever this person was making this film, had something to say. It was very urgent. He wanted to say it, um, and he he was not he couldn't use lots of words to say it. And and the and the the, the force of that desire to say was very strong and Joe was, was trying to grapple with what is it he's telling me? What is it he's telling me? With these few, with these, you know, this minimalist um, language, verbal language. Ah, ça, je and that, that's what he felt. He felt a real urgency to say. Et finalement, uh, ça me prendra peut-être beaucoup plus de temps que si jamais j'avais vu un film de 15 heures pour pouvoir épuiser ce qu'il portait. And he feels that maybe it will take him much more time to really come to terms with what, what you were saying there than if he saw a film that was 15 hours long, um, you know, that he had to, you know, that he, he had to go through. 
that he feels that there's something, there's a critical, um, you know, desire to speak in this film of something, and he feels that he's, he's grappling with that. Yeah. So that's what he says. Wow, wonderful. But that's exactly it. That's, that's the feeling I wanted. I wanted it to be almost like a commercial break where you only have 30 seconds to get your message across. Um, okay. <laughs> exactly. So that was the urgency that I wanted okay. to be felt. Okay. Donc, il, il, uh, oui, il, 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 il dit que, en fait, uh, c'était comme un, 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 une rupture commerciale où il n'a que 30 secondes pour dire ce qu'il doit, doit, doit dire. Donc, il le dit de cette manière-là. Mm -hmm. C'est ce qu'il souhaitait, c'est ce qu'il projetait. Ah, uh, well, let me just say this. I felt that your film... Um, I was taken with, in some sense, the modernity of your film. I, I think I already said that to you the other day. The speed, the speed, for example, there was enormous speed in the Alexander the Great cut off my nose. I mean, the, the, the swiftness of it, um, of the ways in which the, the words, the images were passing by, passing by. And that's what I feel very strongly in the uh, racing protocol, that, um, that, that there was something extremely modern and virtual and almost commercial-like um, about the images that flash across screen um, and that, that are going at a, at, a, at a really incredible speed. And of course, once you now told us about this accident you were in, um, it, I have a very different understanding than I did initially, because initially I thought it was about the ways in which I would say this generation wants everything now, wants to speak, wants to move, wants to create, that kind of um, deep desire to, to create and, 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 and a kind of self-absorption. Now, once you tell me the story of what happened to you on the motorcycle, I, I see that as the will not so much to power as to live, that you've got to live. And so I, I was just interested in the place of speed and images and desire in, in, in several of the films that, you, um, that, you, that, that I saw on between Vimeo and the Alexander film. Well, I don't know if that's completely off the mark. No, um, no, no, you're, you're, but I, you're, I, you're, I was you're spot on. That. Yeah. I mean, the will to live is still the will to power, especially as a young black uh, man in this world. The, the, the desire to, to be well, is almost militant. I mean, it, inadvertently so. So, I, I think the the accident yes. was yeah, a, okay, a, okay. A, an awakening, like a rude awakening of like you know, time to really you know get this thing. It's a priority thing. It's a cold. It's a, it's a real. Um, it get just changes time. you. Get, get, oh. Okay. Yeah. I can. Oh my God. Yes. Um. I can imagine. I mean, I, I can imagine that. But I, I but I'm I keep in mind a generation that is so eager to be where where media is so important, where people want to be seen, where people want to be the best rapper, the best that that kind of desire that as as the person says, and, and I'm interested in you because you have a female voice as well as a male voice with this this um synchronizer. Um, wanting to be the champion, wanting to be powerful, wanting to get, this is my destiny. Wanted to, so I, 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 I think that's interesting the way in which your own story changes, at least for me, my, my capacity to understand that particular, um, that particular film of yours. So I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't said this to Joe, so I don't know what he, what he would think about it. Um, but at any rate, so that, that, that was sort of a take on, on those particular films. I, I felt like it was a moment where, I, I don't know if you if you dabble in the French poets, but Guillaume, Guillaume Apollinaire walking down the streets of of Paris and um, seeing signs and you know billboards and I I felt that there's a lot of that in both um, the Racing Protocol and um, and the uh, Alexander the Great those flashes of lights and messages and things like that. Um, so I don't know what you can yes, make of exactly. that. Yes, exactly. You're very. You, you're very sharp. Maybe nothing, I, I, but, I told um, you, I told you, you're very sharp, uh, Miss uh, Julia Eileen. You're very sharp, Eileen Julia. Well, I don't know about that, but I'm glad you think <laughs> no, but, that. But, but you know, I, I so I was interested I mean, by that, those features of that. Yeah, go ahead. 
Well, as, as artists, you know, we love to hear people that um, genuinely have an understanding of not just art, but also our, the, the things that we're alluding to, you know, that we put a lot of time and effort into creating something that is, um, is tangible, palatable, but at the same time has its, uh, its unique identity. And for you to be able to recognize yeah. and, and pinpoint those various aspects is, is, um, is remarkable. So I, I appreciate it. Well, maybe that will. All right. Okay. If you do, great. Okay. Um, Joe, mm -hmm. est-ce que tu veux poser une question, rajouter quelque chose? Non, je, non? En fait, je suis en train de revisionner dans, dans, dans la tête le, le, le film. Là. Je, 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 je continue encore à passer en boucle. Je continue à me passer encore en okay, boucle. Okay. So your film is, 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 is looping back in his brain. Okay, we'll be back <laughs> in his brain. En fait, c'est un faux euh, 50 secondes, parce que dans son traitement en boucle, oh, yeah. la boucle, elle dure beaucoup plus que 57 secondes, parce qu'elle peut durer des heures, parce que ça, ça revient. Okay, okay. Donc, He's... Euh, okay. C'est comme si dans son dispositif, il enclenchait un, un process qui durait 57 secondes, mais qui pouvait durer des heures et des heures et des heures. Okay, he's, he's saying that um, it's, you know, it, it, it may have lasted 57 seconds, but... Um, but it keeps coming back. Wow, thank you. I appreciate it. And it, 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 it loops on and on, looping back in that way. Okay. And he, he thinks that that must also have been your objective to force people to, you know, to, it, and it's haunting, actually. It's haunting. I mean, I'm haunted by the, the motorcycle one, um, also the Alexander the Great one. But, you know, I feel, well, I wanted to say something about Joe's film, then I'll come back, um, because I sort of felt that Masmi, was a kind of, um, I felt it was a, well, for me, the, a phil there's a philosophical dimension to it, a kind of probing of the interior, in a way, of, 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 of the human interior. Oh, I, should, should we, should, I should be saying that, oui. I, I feel like there's a probing of profoundly what it means to be human. In this film where there are no people, um, I feel like there's a probing of that, that it's, that it's this exploration, this deep sort of sounding out of, of humanity at, at, in our gut. That, that's, that's sort of the way I feel it. And, um, and yeah, I don't know if you have complete. It definitely has a post-apocalyptic mm -hmm. feel. No, I je, je said simply that for me, it was like a philosophical philosophy where you sound l'humanité dans le ventre, dans l'âme, tu, tu sondes, tu, tu prends, la, tu, tu, tu prends les, les, les profondeurs de l'humain. That, that's how I feel about C'est comme ça que je, je vis ton, ton film. Je pense que j'ai senti à un moment donné, dans un environnement où il n'y a, a personne. Oui, oui, oui j'ai dit ça. Alors qu'en fait, il y a un animal, il y a une personne. Mais bon, il y a la voix, la voix. Et bien sûr, il y a la, il y a la voix. Oui. Euh, mais la voix, c'est quasiment le lien entre La voix, c'est comme les rochers, c'est comme la mer. Oui, oui. On pourrait presque penser que la voix, c'est un élément de la nature. So, um, well... Le graphisme de la voix est comparable à celui des rochers ou à celui de l'océan. Mm -hmm. Well, he's saying that the graph... Because I was saying, I, I felt that he was, like, sounding the human, so, so in some deep space. Um, and he said that I, that I said that there wasn't, that there were no people. And he said, no, no, there, there is a person. And it's true, it's the voice. Uh, but who uh, is like a part of the, like a, he's like a rock, he's like the sky, he's like light, he, he's, the person is all, is all of those things. Yes. Um, and so I, I, you know, I was... Pour l'essentiel, but... l'élément, le, le, c'est l'homme infiniment petit dans une nature infiniment grande. So he's saying... Et tant qu'on l'oubliera, les choses se passeront mal. Yeah, he's saying that, that man, which I hate to repeat like that, but the human um, is infinitesimal in a world that's infinitely big. And when we forget that, um, things go, go awry. I got the that, feeling of, of a, of a so, um, post apocalypse. And, uh -huh. I, I yeah. felt like everyone had died and uh, this was the result. It was a very ominous, um, very, can I say heavy? Dare I say heavy? Yes, um, yeah, yeah. It was a very, very say it again. heavy. You said, film. Yes, you said it, you felt everyone had died. And, and go ahead, say it again, the rest. I, I felt 
everyone had died and this was the sort of aftermath of of uh, who knows what fallout i mean it could be a no- any number of things but you know it's the play what what play so uh, uh, a very profound film very mm-hmm, very mm-hmm. very Which profound play? and yeah and uh yeah I, I mean that's why i couldn't i even though i had been to this location i didn't instantly grab that i had been there just because of the you way didn't. it was shot yeah i didn't i didn't instantly recognize that i have actually even been to that location okay okay donc il, il vient de dire que pour lui c'est, c'est comme un monde apocalyptique c'est un monde donc euh, oui après après la, l'apocalypse et, euh, et et, et il, il, ne, il ne reconnaissait pas en fait un endroit où il avait il était lui-même passé donc euh, Yeah, it's stripped. It's true. It's true. It's stripped of. Um, it's stripped of the the sorts of the marks of of a particular yeah, the, place. The, the landmark um, aspects. It it, it, it seems to have a, yeah. It, it's stripped of of that. It has a more alle, for me a kind of allegorical. It's an allegorical yeah. space. Um, Absolutely. At least the way I've I've I've. Do, do you have mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me just. So we have a few minutes more. Um, I, I actually would like to um, to take up. Um, I think that you you have um, um, Lion. That there's a way in which you, it seems to me, are defending Africa, not in a kind of um, th- that that Africa. I, I know Joe cares profoundly about Africa, and certainly um, in this film, I think Africa is very deep. Uh, partly in in terms of the chanting in Wolof, if you saw the Wolof, if you heard the Wolof and saw the Wolof version, no, I, I well, I, it's the cadence um, that I because he has I, a version in French as of um, a kind of bow to, to yes, okay, the cadence. The so cadence so that I picked yeah, up there's on. a reference there, but I'm I'm also taken though with a kind of it seems to me a kind of um, what how how to say it uh, I think. You're, you're, you are, I think, nonetheless, taking um, the West to task. I mean, you're taking, you're taking Picasso. Why is Picasso so great? And I think, I think, am I wrong? Am I wrong in thinking that you are um, slamming Alexander, you're slamming Picasso as what you call the substrates of, of, of your Europe, the mythological substrates of your European counterparts? <laughs> Aren't you slamming them? Even in, in if I'm, unless I heard wrong, you talk about Jews. You talk about Jews in, in, the, in the two films where you're, you know, sort of mo- doing a kind of, um, what are those dances the kids used to do in the 80s uh, on the floor? Um, oh, break dancing. Thank break-dancing. you. Thank you. Break-dancing. Yes, break dancing. Yeah, you're doing your break dance and you're, and you're, you're, you're bringing down a, a Picasso and Alexander to size. Or am I wrong about that? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say I. It, 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 I don't mean to. It, I don't want it to come across combative, but um, you know, it's just it's part of of what artists are supposed to do is pull apart um, the pieces, you know, take our toys apart and and reconfigure them. I, I I think I I am aiming at sort of the 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 design, the protocol of what we are all meant, the box that we're all meant to fit in and questioning that box and saying, you know, who is to say, who is, who is the one that decides who is God and will play the voice of God, you know, as, as Joe has in his film, the voice of God, you know, who gets to be, who gets to uh, design that person. (laughs) You you understand what I mean? So I'm just kind of mocking, um, what we are, what academia is, what, what, you know, as an African kid, we grow up, we are all taught, in this, we're taught in the okay. British uh, okay. tradition of, of education. So I'm sort of just making a okay. art and mockery, I guess. Fun. With what, yeah, fun. Uh, yes, yeah, just fun. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very fun. Because I'm not saying that, that Picasso or, well, Alexander might be debatable. Hold up in such a way that um, that that you know they they cast long shadows because they're held. Well, held they up cast certain... they cast immense immense shadows. 
at the at the, at the shadows. Yes, at the yes. shadows. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you think? Do you think? Because one of my thoughts was that, what about art now? Is there something? Is it with in this, these particular circumstances? Is there a special role for art? Would you say for what you do at this point? Um, or is this point just like all the other points? I, the, the, the honest answer is that this point is just like every other point. Um, but mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the artist in me wants to say that this is a moment where we can galvanize a creative spirit and all the wonderful things that mm. one might want to hear one say. I, I, I think you know the the plight and the struggle of blackness yeah, is not a wonders. struggle, and um, I think what I want my work to sort of signal and um, the the message that I'm interested in projecting is that you don't get to define the misery as well as the happiness, uh, and yeah, and that is the part of the yeah, narrative. Yeah. yeah, you don't get to decide that this is miserable. That but you that poverty is miserable or that blackness is ugly or any of those things that, you know, we are, we are ingrained in, in messaging, whether it's the media, whether it's um, social media, whether it's through books, entertainment, movies, music, et cetera, et cetera. But it's what you talked about earlier being okay. like the bombardment of, of, of media. So okay. it's just, it's just meant to sort of create. So where are you going next? What's, 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 what's waiting on your palette or your camera lens or what, or your pencil? What, well, what's next? Oddly enough, um, I was actually working on a film that I had shot in Sierra Leone several years ago, actually, um, that was entitled or is aptly entitled uh, Lion Recovery. And so it was actually yeah. the, sort of the, the mo I would say the modalities to which one would go through to recover from a disaster. So interesting enough, interestingly enough, I was unable to finish this film as a result of the current disaster that we were in. So I find that kind of ironic. But that's what I'm currently working on, wow. and um, I hope ah, to finish. Après, puisqu'en fait, euh, par rapport au premier aspect, il euh, y a parce que les, les réponses qu'on a Mais après, euh, ceci étant fait, il me reste plus qu'à à retourner euh, euh, à terre, à mon jardin et à, à l'écriture. <rire> Mais c'est tout. Euh, voilà, voilà. Donc, je retourne à ça, je retourne à on commence à structurer les mots et en entre deux mots, bon, je m'occupe du mes plantes. Oui. Je suis sûr que vous avez lu Candide, right? Vous avez lu Candide. Um, um, Joe dit qu'il est going back to his plants. <laughs> it's going to cultivate his garden. But he says that, no, he's going to go back and, and play with words, you know, play with words. And, um, and yeah, and then when he's not playing with words, he's, he'll be working, cultivating his garden, dealing with his plants. The constant gardener, I love it. So, um, yeah, he's, I think, I think that it was, yeah, right, it's, it's between words and the plants. So, um, but I, if I may just, I think that, I think he didn't really expect the kind of response that, um, that Mbasmi got and is thrilled that it went to the festival and, you know. Wow, um, fantastic. And that people are seeing life. And so, yeah. And so um, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to more things from him and I'm looking forward to more things from you. He says that he, Joe says he hopes that, that you will manage to meet between two plants. <laughs> 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 yes. to come back to go away. I want to thank Joe uh, for thank his you. time. Thank you too. Thank you too. And thank I want to thank too. you, of course, and uh, Mahen. Oh, and I want to make sure to thank Mahen Bonetti for setting this up. This is wonderful.